to begin with, you'll need to go to cloud.sagemath.com and create an account. It's free. Once you create an account, then you'll sign in. Also notice that you'll only want to use Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. So those are the only three browsers for which it really works, and Chrome is definitely the one that I advise. Okay, so let's go ahead and log in. This is cloud.sagemath.com. I've already created an account, so I'm just going to sign in. And when you first sign in, you get this page, which is the set of all your projects. Now, you won't have any projects, so you'll want to create a new project. So let's call this project uh, Predictive Analytics. Let me create the project. Notice you get some messages here, and it says that it's created less than a minute ago. Once you have a project, you can put files into the project. So let's click on it. There aren't any files in here yet, so let's go ahead and create some files. And what we're going to do is we're going to upload. We have these two notebooks that we downloaded from the D2L site. And you can actually either click on here and bring up a file browser dialog, or you can just select these two and drag them onto the big gray box, and it will upload them. Sometimes this doesn't work on Firefox, but I've always uh, seen it work on Chrome. On Firefox, you may have to click and go to the uh, File Browser dialog. Now, once you've done that, you'll go to Files. And you'll see that we now have these two files. Both of these are Jupyter Notebooks. Now, I'm going to start out, and you need to start out, with the Getting Started with Python via Jupyter Notebook. So if I click on that, it's going to take a minute or so to load up. Up here in the corner, you'll see a little uh, message uh, telling you how fast your connection is. And you've also got this little arrow key that lets you do things. And you've got this little box here that allows you to hide the top matter. And now that it's loaded, you can see that inside of the Predictive Analytics project, we have the Getting Started with Python via Jupyter Notebook. And that's this notebook right here. Now, it has a traditional file browser access. So here's File and the commands that you can do there. There's edit, standard edit type things. View, we can actually hide the title. Uh, insert, cells, various things that you can do with cells, run them, select them, so on and so forth. Kernel, which is what we actually are running. That's a the program in the background that actually implements the language we're running. And right now we're running Python 2 as you can see over here in the upper right, and then help, including some nice keyboard shortcuts. Now, a Jupyter Notebook is really a combination of text and uh, YouTubes and images with executable cells. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, here and hide that and then I'm going to go to view and toggle the header and that just gives me some more real estate here now what I want to do is make sure that this is in the Python 2 mode so it should say Python 2 there and that's in my header so if I bring the header back notice it says Python 2 if not I need to go to kernel change kernel and be sure I select that one Hide that back, toggle header. All right. Now, once that happens, in order to execute a cell, you simply put your cursor into one of these executable cells. And notice this turns green. 
So when the cell is active, it's green. When it's not active, it's gray. So now it's actually inactive. Now it's active. Now what I can do when it's active is I can edit and I can execute. And to execute, I hit Shift Enter at the same time, or I can actually click on this little arrow up here and run the cell. And notice I get 1 plus 1 equals 2. There's a lot of text in here for you to read, and I definitely encourage you to do that. There's some tutorials if you want them, but you probably won't need them. And something you'll see fairly often is I can actually embed YouTube videos directly into the notebook. And again, I hit Shift Enter, and it loaded this uh, cell, and the output from the cell is this YouTube video. Uh, you can't see it right now, but it uh, it'll come up as a YouTube video. You may have to go up here, and you may have to allow the use of uh, the videos. But it should work. Uh, now, the video, once you get to the video, then you can play it, and it'll show you different things. Now again, there's an edit mode and a command mode. In the command mode, you have a gray outline. And that's where you're using menus. And essentially, the command mode means you're using this as a traditional website. The edit mode means that you're executing the programming language that's behind the scenes. In this case, Python. So for instance, if I select then notice that I am in command mode and essentially I'm treating this just like I would treat a Facebook page or something like that. If I want to treat this as a programming language I have to make it edit mode and then execute it and notice that it actually does something. Now if a cell is running you'll see that here. Uh, there's also a thing managing the IPython kernel so again, if I put my cursor in here and hit run, then it actually runs this program, which runs for uh, several seconds, uh, and then eventually will say not running. Now that's a little annoying, so I can actually turn that off with this button right here, the interrupt kernel, and now notice it stopped doing that. Okay. You can also restart the kernel. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let you read about it. Now, the text, the Facebook-like, web page-like nature of the Jupyter Notebook is in terms of what's known as markdown. And markdown means that the cell is a markdown cell. Notice when I select this uh, executable cell, it says it's a code cell. But I can change that into a markdown cell. And now I can actually put things in. And when I execute a markdown cell, so let's put something in here. Then it actually will render that in a notebook form. There's lots of things you can do. There's a reference for it up here. I'm going to let you continue to go through this notebook on your own. Uh, you'll see the things about integers. Now we'll be using Python 2.0 so we'll have to keep importing division from the future because 3 over 2 in the old Python 2 point whatever series would actually say 3 over 2 is equal to 1. Well that can cause lots of errors in the future, which is the Python 3.0, it will return that as a 1.5. And that's much better for we as mathematicians. So we can't yet use the Python 3.0 because not everything supports it yet. Although we're really close, and I think any day now we'll just drop the 2. Point whatever and go to 3.0. But mathematicians and computer scientists and data scientists tend to use the two point whatever and that means we have to import the division from the future. 
Otherwise, Python's very straightforward. You bind things to variables. Uh, you have lists and tuples, uh, where a tuple is a, like a coordinate system point, is a tuple. So you can see here is a uh, tuple. So it's with parentheses. And there's a lot of things going on here. Notice that if I want to, if I execute my list here, and then I'd like to know what I can do with my list. If I put that period there and then hit the tab key, then it shows the things that I can do with my list. And again, I'll let you read about that on your own strings. And then finally, a brief little introduction to what will be very important to us, which is what's known as PyLab. So you'll be want to be sure and look at PyLab. Again, there are YouTube videos. So if you execute the YouTube video, then it actually shows you what's going on. I'm not going to do this right now. Uh, but what we have then is the Jupyter Notebook is a way of running code inside of explanations above and below of what you should be doing, what happens. It means that you really don't need to be a programmer. If you read uh, the instructions and the discussion before and after these code cells, the code cells are described and you can figure out what's going on and much of the programming can be ameliorated via these Jupyter Notebooks. Now let me bring this back and go to Files. Also would like for you to, we'll be using just a little bit the computer language R but we'll use it once again in terms of the Jupyter Notebook. And what do we mean by that? Well, we have to be sure that it's running in the R mode, otherwise we have to choose the R. And we get the exact same sort of instructions before and after, but now the commands in the code are R commands, where R is a statistical programming language. And so things are explained before and after. When you execute, then it produces R results. Notice it's running, and this is a thing you would see coming out of R. So I don't expect you to understand this. As a matter of fact, this is just showing off R. So just uh, execute these cells and just see R in action. Uh, we'll discuss R briefly and use it just a little bit later on in the course.